you think the motor oil debate was bad or is bad? Wait till you get a load of the transmission oil. The torque amplifier is really what, in my opinion, put International on the map. Game changer. You're logging, you're going to lose power, you're about to die, pull that torque amplifier back, essentially drop you half a gear, and go. Now, this was built in 1954. In 54, they just had regular straight oils. And by about 19, I'm guessing 57, definitely 58 they found out that the molasses type rear end oil that they were running in these wasn't working so good with the torque amplifier and they had to do something so what they did was they went from sae 80 to a 10 weight oil with a torque amplifier lubricant additive so it was like every four gallons of of the 10 weight you put the ta lube in then from there they come out with the high trend i think the farball 560 was the first tractor to use high trend and no more additive no more 10 weight although high trend is a 10 weight oil it had all that additive crap essentially already put in it and these tractors call for high trend I had somebody comment the other day, they're like, oh, and all them old transmissions, I just run heavy oil in it. Okay. Well, this isn't an M. This isn't an H. This isn't a C. This is a Super MTA. And it ain't even really, it, yeah, it's a Super M, but the torque amplifier is your difference. When these things get a little bit worn and, and in colder temperatures, they found out the torque amplifiers weren't working right with the heavy oil. So let's go over this, what it takes to change one out. I don't see a lot of videos on these. It's rightfully so, they only built these one year. Okay, to drain these, you got the prototypical plug right there. You got a plug, should be right there. And it calls for 15 gallons. Now, I've had guys tell me, well, I put 13 in mine, and it started running out the level hole. Well, then you didn't drain it very good. <laughs> then your fill plug's going to be right there. So, I mean, there, yeah, it does have some similarities to the M and whatnot. Now, when it comes to your PTO, this is an independent PTO. All right. has its own fill right here, and I'm going to check this, too. This is your fill. That's your level. That's your drain. And 10 weight oil will go in, well, excuse me, high tran. <laughs> I keep calling it 10 weight, but really, I, I'm pretty sure that high tran is 10 weight, but high tran will go in there as well. To be honest with you, the only heavy weight oil I would use in this tractor, not talking about motor oil, is worm gear. And it calls for, I, that calls for SAE 80. I just put, you know, 80, 90 weight in there, but it's, it's a pint. You're supposed to check that every year. Now, as far as the transmission oil, you're supposed to change it once a year, or if you hit a thousand hours before that year is up, change it then too. So I can tell you, man, I'm guilty. I, I'll i be changing my transmission fluid in my tractors once a year. I just don't. And I'm sure most people don't as well. And you know, somebody got smart with me in the comments, and you're now blocked, so keep them coming, and I keep a blocking. Said, you know, he put it in quotes, most people. It's like, it, I'm far more fanatic, and I have a YouTube channel, and I know a lot of people, man, and I mean hundreds, okay? And they're all antique tractor owners. When I say most people, I'm talking about a pretty good inference, a pretty good research inference draw of hundreds of 
antique tractor owners. Here's the thing, if you get the owner's manual or the, the service manual, okay, the originally printed service manual, it doesn't have the upgrade call for Hytran in that book. Later on it was added or made and really the, the, the dealerships were notified and it was up to the dealerships to tell the owners when they went in, hey, I need some SAE 80. Oh, what do you need that for? Well, I'm getting ready to change the transmission oil in my SMTA. Oh, there's been a change. Let me tell So that's how guys found out they'd really, so when you get a reprint of an original service manual, just know that there may have been changes along the way, like in this case. Oh wait, what do I see? Boom, another level plug. There's a level plug there, and there's a level plug there. There's also a second front drain right there. And I kind of see it's rounded off a little bit. Now, you want to make sure you hit both of these front drains because I'll tell you what happens. If you don't, you can leave as much as five to seven gallons of the old fluid in this rear end. And I ain't done with that. So... With independent PTO, check. Torque amplifier, check. That's your level plug, not that one. Now we're on our way to go get some high tran. A lot of it. Well, would you look at there. $425 later. Plus I got some Summit total diesel treatment for the combine. But yeah, and then I got a deuce and a half kicker in case I need it. And in the event you think I'm talking turkey, I brought the manual out. Um, it's just a reprint of the original. These are kind of expensive. They're 50, 60 bucks. But somebody took their time to print it all out, put it in a bunch. You know, when I was in college, we had, we go to Kinko's. Remember Kinko's? Are they still around? And we'd have them bind it like this. But anyways, refer to page, I believe, 38. Yeah, close enough. One-handed socks. Oh, okay. Actually, we'll start on page 31 first and foremost. And this is all the this is the lubrication table here, and you can see like everybody talks about low ash 30, low ash 30. Yeah, SAE 30 above 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now our winners, you know this this is below 32 so anything below freezing they're calling for 10 weight oil which is what they you had an option of running in these tractors and then sae 20 from 32 to 80 which you know the majority of our year is in this parameter right here so you know low ash 30 low ash 30 yeah well you might want to get you a book and then uh what else are we looking at um generator i removed that so that's one less thing on the list. Um, IPTO, two quarts of 10 weight. And we're gonna use Hytran. Steering gear housing, worm gear, pint, 80 weight. They got uh, the transmission. This is SAE 80 across the board. Again, that's what they started off, 15 gallons. If you drain it all out, if you can get them two front plugs off, Turn the page. Actually, let's turn the page again. Okay, we start right here with illustration 37C. There's your level, okay? 30, they're numbering it 30. That's the first level I showed you. And then the first drain plug that I showed you up front. I'll call it the middle drain plug 31. Let's uh, turn the page. Okay, let's flop our back on over. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. Okay, use blah, 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 keep. Okay, lubricant up to the level plug 30 on the left side of the transmission case, okay? 30, that's right there. And that's right there on the tractor, that's 30. Okay, now this is one of those, if you know, you know. Uh, 30 on the left side transmission case. See illustration 37C we just did. Also on tractors with independent power takeoff. Check. 
or torque amplifier. Check. Keep the lubric keep the lubricant up to the level of plug 32 on left side of the clutch housing. See illustration 38 alpha. Right there. There's the plug I just was kind of hoping wasn't rounded off and I still haven't really looked hard, but that's the plug. TA and IPTO, boom, that's your level plug, not plug 30 as illustrated up here. Actually, it's not it's not really rounded. It uh, should come out of there easy. It's wet too. So that means it's probably not tight. And then that's your other one there. So two front plugs and one in the rear. Now, before I go pop and drain plugs, I wanna make absolutely certain that I can get that plug out. And I don't know, it doesn't look too bad. Let's go get something to pull it. That half inch ain't gonna work. Right on there and turn it right. What? You kidding me? Son, I could have probably, after the initial break, I can turn that off my hand. All right. Smells like, well, see that as condensation. And um, that means when we pop the back plug, there's gonna be a whole nation of water. So we can go easy on that back plug. I'm gonna show you, man. All right, first things first, man. Um, I, for those of you that are new to the channel, know this I just bought this tractor and you saw a little condensation up top of the fill plug and I've seen as much as two gallons of water come out of these things and I am under no delusion that that couldn't happen here okay okay now that we're busted I need to clear out of here or that stuff sprays in my face in the event that it does, right? I take that drain plug off slow, slow, slow and look for water drops. Okay. It ain't loose enough yet. Some guys use a 12 point wrench on these. Always had good luck with a great big, huge wannabe crescent wrench. And start to turn this by hand real slow. Well, I was, but that should quit on me. Okay, I want that bucket right there. This is not a situation where you want to play around with the old non-existent bucket at all. Still no water. That's a two and a half gallon bucket right there, and I got a five gallon right behind it. This is really the only part of doing this that gets can be kind of stupid okay what are we doing bro okay yeah it's milky no surprise it's not going to be milky though when i'm done with it okay I just kind of let it semi sort of do its thing and then before I pull the plug and tire. Woo! You like caramel candy? And you're going to like this stuff here. You know, almost reminds me of like a melted down cow tail. <laughs> Minus the vanilla, just the outside. Okay. Keep rotating buckets, that's all you do here. Steady Freddy. You know it, I've seen worse. 
I've seen a lot worse than that. All right, come on back. Bring it on home. There you go. So I'll just let that run. I can tell you, it smells like high train to me. So he was running the right stuff in here. He just, just like most guys, and I'm one of them, you know, they, it's expensive, man, to change these every year. Right now we have probably about 12 gallons drained already without even popping the front. I think when we pop the fronts, we're gonna get that extra three. And of course, that's not done running there, but either way, getting there. And this tractor is fairly level. I did not put a level on it, but just from an eyeball standpoint, um, I had to level this out before I had this put up. And uh, so yeah, it's fairly level. And while that's draining, you do want it level. Hence the level plug. They work a little better. In the event that you have a really old tractor you buy in the rear end, there's sludge in it, you, you pop that, it's two gallons of water come out and then about two gallons of oil and then the rest is sludge. About five gallons of diesel fuel, dump it in there. You got nothing to lose. Five gallons of diesel fuel, dump it in there, drive it around about a quarter mile, go through the gears, high gear, low gear, all that, slosh it, come back, drain it out. Um, you can even use a stick in there to, you know, wedge out the, dig out some of the sludge. And maybe you have to do that twice. But I got lucky here. Because based on the way the rest of the tractor looked, um, I didn't know what to expect. I have seen way worse. And on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst, I'd say that's about 2 or 3. Lucky me. See, I don't think there's more than a couple gallons left in the entire system. System of a down. There we go. All right. Well, not finger loose yet. Foot loose. One of the ones that everyone ignores. You know, it's like, oh, I got the back one. That's good enough. This is based on how tight this is. It ain't been off here in a while. Kirby bucket bucket ready. Can turn that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What we got? Should be the same. No water. Okay. Yep. Same uh, melted down cow tail, milky wilky, crappy dappy. Yep. Probably a gallon out of here. And maybe a half gallon out of this plug up here up top. Yeah, see how much is coming out of there. I mean, you don't pop these two up here. All that stays. And it, it doesn't take much of this stuff to contaminate your new oil. You really don't. I mean, are you going to leave a, a quarter or two in there? Yeah, if you don't flush it, you will. But that's, that's grossly different than a couple gallons. Well, I'm calling that 15 gallons because there's still some in there, probably half a gallon combined in both buckets. So yeah, he had it just about topped off. Chocolate, caramel. Now we need to bust this level. Oh, crap. Whew. It's a tight one. Mr. Grinch. Hey, look, nothing's coming out. And no, I'm not going to have you watch me pour in three five gallon buckets. Oh, crap. That's some weight, boys. Whew. Hopefully, it drinks it as fast as I can pour it. Because the more I pour, the lighter it gets the more likely I am to say, boom, and all my energetic sayings. Come on, bro. You can drink a little faster than that. I know people that dump these into two and a half gallon jugs and then pour them, but I ain't handling it twice. I'm just not. So, got about 14, 
gallons in there and getting close so I switched over to the two and a half gallon jug. We ain't running yet, so. All right, we are running out. And that is, got that red, you know, high tran tint to it. The milkiness is gone, gone, gone. And that's good, good, good. So it's time for the plug. P lug. We're full. And yeah, it, it was right on at about 15 gallons. So book was accurate. So that's really all there is to it. Two fronts, a rear, and a fill plug. And then, you know, your level plug, that's that's it. The hardest thing is, is dumping it into the stupid thing with five gallon buckets. And it looks worse than what it is. I mean, that's about a half a pint spilled total in 15 gallons. So we're full. Anytime this rain wants to stop, we can get this thing out. <laughs> not even with the rear end set up right. No weights, not loaded. I'll bet we still pull them 14s. Beast mode. Boom. I'll see you at the next video.